For you, who do you see as the greatest fighter of all time? You guys don't mind that, right? That, that, hey, it's boxing. Bells. Bells, right? Boxing. Just, I'm just glad that I'm not at the point in my life where I'm so shot. I hear a bell, I start, you know, I just start throwing punches. You know? Thank God. Thank God. Um, the, la the infamous landline. We're suffering by not having my man, Rob, here. Because he would have took care of that. Because he's smarter than me. He's a good producer. Um, listen, I already made the, uh, this, the explanation of why it's different between greatest and favorite. So the greatest, you don't have to have seen him. Maybe it's better if you saw him on tape. That's important. But you didn't have to be around there. And you know what he did because it's in the history books. And it's, it's a tough question. It's a great question. Um, but you have to go back in time, I think, as I touched on earlier, to my favorite time. But you have to go back not because of preference, just because of reality. Back in the 30s, 20s, 40s, whatever you had more fights. You had more places for guys to fight, more clubs. And it was the biggest sport in the country, by the way, bigger than baseball. And you had more fighters. And you had the best fighters fighting each other. You didn't have what you have today where guys stay away from each other because they were different promoters or, you know, different or because they want to keep undefeated and they want to fight for a world title when they have 15 fights or 18 fights. You didn't even get near Madison Square Garden until you had 30 fights maybe. <laughs> I mean, forget about fighting for a world title. But the, you, the emphasis back then wasn't on manipulating a record or navigating a guy uh, through his career so he could get to a money place right away or that he could get on television uh, because he has an undefeated record. No, all you did back in those days because there were so many good fighters, you wanted to develop your fighter to become the most experienced, the best fighter he could become. So you fought everybody because it didn't matter. You could fight somebody, Rob, and you could lose. That's like a death sentence in the minds of, the promoters and managers today. Oh, my God. It wasn't a death sentence back then. It might be the best thing that ever happened to them because that might be the lesson, the experience that makes them a better fighter. And you could lose and you fight the next week, not the next month. The next week you fight another fighter and you were, you were right on a big stage you were right in a good spot still because you were fighting good fighters because you belonged, because you showed your worthiness. You showed your value. It didn't matter that you lost the fight because the people understood these were all good fighters fighting each other, getting better. And so I'd have to go back. I mean, you had fighters that had 300 fights, 200 fights. I'd have to go back to that era, and I did. And it's tough to pick a guy. And, but I did. Henry Armstrong, 300 fights, 100-something knockouts. Um, I mean, Henry Armstrong won the featherweight, no junior titles. I'm not knocking guys that collect titles, you know, the way some people uh, – you know, collect coins or whatever, um, um, you know, or, you know, collect hats, whatever. Or like like our friend Ken, collect Ferraris. <laughs> that Ferrari addiction, it's a tough one to have. He's going to go nuts when he is. He's so sensitive. He's going to say, oh, no. He's going to turn to his wife, who's a beautiful lady, and he's got a beautiful family. And, and uh, he's going to turn and he said, oh, no, Teddy mentioned Ferrari again. 
uh, people are going to be writing on the internet, oh, you got Ferraris? Oh, you got Ferraris? You got, oh, God. So, I, Henry Armstrong, he won the featherweight, lightweight, welterweight, no in between junior titles, full titles. And then he went and fought for the middleweight title against Severino Garcia, and they robbed him. They made it a 15 round draw. He really won the fight. He would have had four, four full titles. So he had three, and he defended them. He defended them. Three full titles. He wants, you know, these guys nowadays, if they fight four times in a year, we're like, wow. Wow. You know, three times. You know, pretty good. But he once fought, you'd have to look in the record book, Rob, but I want to be accurate, but he once fought about 35 times in a year. Yeah. It was over 30. In one in a year. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So this, and he had the greatest nickname. You know, he had Hammerin Hank and Homicide Hank. You didn't need to know nothing else. All you needed to hear was Homicide Hank. He must be a bad dude. He must be a he must be a serious man. This must be a serious actor here, and he was. And on top of all that, he had the style that put fannies in the seats. Aggressive, back you up, never stop punching. I mean, he was a punching machine. If they had punch stats back then, forget about it. Those people would have, their fingers would have disintegrated. Their fingers would have melted during a fight. Melted. They would have, they would have been like crying and people would have said, <laughs> well, what happened? I have no more fingers. They're, they're, my fingers, they're gone. They, they, they're gone. They evaporated. So, I mean, there's a lot of great ones, a lot of great ones, but um, that's one of them. That he's my favorite. You know, he's uh, he's pretty damn special. Greatest of all time. Uh, you know, I know you got Ali. Um, we got ten ten percent left. I know I know you got Ali. I know that you got. You know, Joe Lewis, uh, I love uh, all those guys. Uh, so it's hard. It's hard to pick. And there's so many others that were great that people, unfortunately, a lot of people don't even know who they are. 